This video gives another example of optimization. In this example, we're looking at uh, considering two numbers where the sum of one number and twice the other number has the value 30, and the product of the numbers is as large as possible. And our goal is we want to find these two numbers. So our first step is to simply give our unknown some names. So we have two numbers that are unknown, and so we're going to give them num names, and we'll name them x and y. Once we have our names, we need to identify what is it that needs to be optimized. And so the key phrase to look for is something like as large as possible, or as small as possible, or the maximum or minimum. So we need to find the product of the numbers is as large as possible. And so we, we take our two numbers, x and y, and we multiply them, and we define that as our product. And so p is the quantity that we need to make as large as possible. Now, in addition, we need to take advantage of the information, and we call this a constraint. Our constraint in this example is that the sum of one number, we'll call that x, and twice the other number, so that's my x plus 2y, that that sum equals the value 30. And the reason we take this information is we call this a constraint. It allows us to solve for one of our variables. In this example, uh, it'll be easiest to solve for x by subtracting 2y. I could solve for y uh, by subtracting x and then dividing by 2, and that's a little more complicated, so I'm going to use y. So we solve for x. x is equal to 30 minus 2y. And what we'll do is we're going to take the x and our p, and we're going to use the formula 30 minus 2y instead. So step four, we make the substitution using our constraint, and the advantage of this is it gives us a function. Our optimized value, our product, is now a function of one variable. And so I can use the principles of calculus to find the maximum value. So we now have a relation, p equals 30y minus 2y squared, and we want to find the largest value possible. Uh, just a comment. We're going to be able to do this because, in fact, if I thought about y as my independent variable and p as my dependent variable, this is the equation of an upside-down parabola, which has a maximum at its vertex. So step five is to find the extremes of our function. And we do that by taking the derivative. In other words, we're looking for critical points. We take our derivative. The derivative of 30y is 30, and the derivative of 2y squared is 4y y is my independent variable, so I don't actually have a chain rule here. My derivative of p with respect to y is 30 minus 4y. And we inter we're interested where the derivative is 0, so we set that formula equals 0 and solve for y, and I get a value y equals 15 halves. Well, the reason that we find critical points is we can now analyze using sign analysis of the derivative. Uh, we can analyze whether this is a maximum or a minimum. So, 15 halves is 7 and a half, so I can pick values to the right. For example, I could pick 8, 9, or 10. 10 is easy. Uh, 30 minus 4 times 10 is negative. Um, 0 is on the left, and so if I plug 0 in, I would get a positive number. And so this allows me to calculate my sign analysis for my derivative. I then interpret uh, my sign analysis. The interval where my derivative is positive is where my function is increasing and the interval where my derivative is negative is where my function is decreasing. Because I'm increasing up to 15 halves and then decreasing afterwards, I know that p has a maximum at y equals 15 halves. And that's what I was looking for. I was looking for where the product was as large as possible. We finished by answering the question. The question was to find the numbers, and we just have y. So y equals 15 halves. I'm also interested in the value of x. I used my formula when I solved for x, that x equals 30 minus 2y, which allows me to solve and get the value that x equals 15. So that finishes the problem.